Well, good morning everyone and welcome to another podcast. I'm up in Aberdeenshire today on the uh, River Dee doing some fly fishing for salmon. I'm at Park North today which is a wonderful estate up here. It's got an excellent length of the River Dee. I fished a good bit of it yesterday and it's a beautiful setting um, surrounded by woodlands. There's a nice long windy drive down through the woods to get to the fishing hut and there's red squirrels jumping about from tree to tree. I've just been having a chat with the uh, the gilly and uh, there's a party of Americans coming over today and he's not entirely sure whether they can fish or not so I said look I'm, I'm more than happy for him to, to look after them and I've come up out the way to the top of the beach. I fished this before so I know the pools and I'm going to fish this down. It's it's hard to judge a, a, a width of river. It's probably, I think it's getting on for about 100 foot across uh, where I am at the minute. It's probably one of the widest sections on the, on the river. It's a beautiful spring morning, sunshine, bit of, uh, bit of cloud cover, perfect fish, a perfect fishing morning really. In front of me here then, I've, I've got a, an area of um, rapids as a, a torrent of water enters the top of the pool, a nice... Um, turbulent stream running down the centre and then there's a, a stiller area just to the uh, the left of the turbulent section. Um, I'm going to fish this from the bank and it's quite a steep bank behind me. The, the wading here is not so clever so um, I'm going to fish it from the bank which restricts my spay cast a little bit but um, hopefully we'll, we'll get a fly out there and swing it round just off this turbulent water just onto the seams of the current and see if there's anything there. Um, no fish caught on here yesterday. Um, in fact, we didn't even see a fish between five of us yesterday. There's one chap had a, uh, had a pull. Um, but I noticed on uh, Fish Pal last night there was six caught off the D and uh, a few further up from here as well. So there is fish running through and um, that's what we're actually targeting today. There, are, there aren't really any resident fish uh, this time of year on here. So um, we are actually trying to catch salmon that are running through so it's just a case of putting the hours in and having that fly swinging across and just uh, one that comes past it and, and takes a snap at the fly the uh, the outfit i've got today is a uh, 14 foot rod um, i've got a short scandy head uh, fly line with an intermediate tip and about two feet two and a half feet of leader um, and then I've got a, uh, a monkey tube fly uh, with a size 8 hook. So the bank up behind me is covered in these beautiful uh, yellow flowers of gorse. And um, there's some stones that have been put in to help protect, help protect the bank from erosion. And that's what I'm just clambering across. You can probably hear the river in the background. So I think we'll start here and... Um, wander our way down this bank and then we're going to fish some of the pools further down i start with a very short line just the end of the uh, just the tip really of the fly line and the leader and we'll just bring that round into the immediate vicinity of the uh, the pool just in case there's something lurking there and then just lengthen the line as I go each cast until I'm working a, a full length of line out. We've had a bit of water um, last week here and the river is dropping and just chatting to the gilly this morning and we were just hoping that some of these fish that have run through when the water is now receding it'll just slow them down a little bit and they'll just stop for a rest. But it's a, it's a funny old game, this salmon fishing. It's, um, especially these days when there aren't really the, the numbers of salmon there to be caught. You've just got to put the hours in, put the time in, and you've really got to have a love for the game and a, a love for being out on the river and all the other stuff that comes with it. Because the chances of just getting it right and getting into a fish are reasonably small. But at least we've got decent conditions. The last uh, two or three years I've been up fishing in Scotland. I normally have a trip or two every year. So the last two or three years we've had bright hot sun and low rivers and you know just terrible fish fishing conditions. 
So at least we've got a bit of a uh, bit of water to fish in and nice overcast day. And it's such a beautiful area this, it really is. I know most river environments are, are pretty, but it's such a pretty river and it's not too intimidating with a fly rod as well. I often fish on the Tay and if you're fishing from the bank it can see an awful long way out to the to, to the middle, let alone the other side, whereas on the D you can have sections that are only 50 or 60 feet across so perfectly manageable on a fly rod and it's excellent fly water this as well it screams fly fishing lots of nice runs and quick pulls to allow the fly to swing right I'm just gonna have to clamber along these rocks a little bit to get myself further down there we go get some longer casts out now I'm casting out into the the fast water and just letting the fly swing around and I'm going to put some strips in as well bit of movement so these uh, these running fish the fish that are moving through tend to be aggressive and they're the ones that uh, tend to take your fly so a bit of movement in there is uh, no bad thing right, dropping a longer cast out now not quite got enough room for a a snap tea cast so it's a single spay I do like the snap tea cast uh, need a little bit of room here and just got some rocks in the way I think for anyone who's for anyone who uh, is trout fishing and always fancies having a go at salmon I think somewhere like the D is a a good place to start because it, it has some nice easy pulls to fish on a fly uh, and even if your casting's not really up to scratch you know you can wade out and you can bring the fly around and you've still got a chance of putting your fly in front of a fish right let's move down a bit again Probably doing two casts and then moving down the rocks here. There's a lovely old fishing hut here as well. With a nice little gas stove and the gillies make you a... Uh, oh, I'm snagged up there. Gillies make you a cup of coffee in the morning where we chat tactics and meet the other anglers before we head out fishing I'm um, gonna get this off or I'm gonna have to wade down I think and ah oh, that's come free excellent just check my fly ah, a bit of weed on it so there's two uh, you can fish both sides of the river on the estate you've got park north and park south I'm on park north um, and the reason simply I chose this is it it suits the right-handed caster a bit better so the other banks a little more inconvenient for casting so uh, I chose this one to fish for three days and I, th I thought I'd have the full three days on here get to know the river a bit more and really soak up some of the um, ambience and get a feel for get a feel for what's going on really Let's strip this back there's a few snags down there so I don't want to don't want to leave it in there for too long it's just coming around on snagging on a few rocks so I'll strip this back a little quicker there's a bit of sun on the water actually but you can see that's soon going to be hidden by some clouds that are coming in right let's move down a touch And the wading's just a little just a little trickier here so I'm just gonna have to go a bit steadier so I uh, squeeze past this bush so literally behind me I've got a sheer a sheer bank of yellow gorse flowers that's just making casting a little more difficult well I can just about manage a snap tea now I think so I'll snap one out there into the pool. There we go. That's better. So I was fishing a slow sinking tip yesterday, and uh, 
it was really digging in and was getting a few snags it's not the deepest of rivers there's a few deep pools but the glides are you know three four deep feet deep in places so I was fine I was catching rocks so I switched to an intermediate and I had a chat with the gilly this morning he says that'll be fine for these conditions these running fish as they come up the river they're not hugging the bottom they're not resident like resident fish that are skulking at the bottom of pools these are fish that are moving in the towards the top tiers of the water and your fly really doesn't need to be too low in these conditions It's really bringing the uh, fly around at some pace actually. I'm having to recast this quite quickly. Let's move down a bit again. Just shows you the speed of the water coming into the pool. It's a real white water torrent in the middle of the river. The uh, great fun in a rafting. Oh, just hit the, hit the branches there behind me. That's the, just a problem with these shear banks. You can't really form the D-loop you want to. So you do end up snagging the branches and I've just put the uh, leader into a little sapling growing out the bank here let's try and get that out I have to put the rod down ah there we go we are unsnagged just check the fly while I've got it out looks good So the rod I'm using is a, a 14 foot 10 weight and um, I am glad actually I've got that kind of power because we have had a bit of a breeze the past few days and it just helps um, just punching it through the breeze a little bit, that extra power. Right, move down out the way of the current a little bit, try not to fall in. Right, I'm going to get out and fish this from the bank in a minute because the wading is a little bit bobbly to put it mildly. So just moving down the pool now, the river's narrowed a tiny bit and uh, the rapids have changed into a large area of what shall we say is very turbulent water, nice strong flow and that's the area I'm going to expect a, a running salmon to be moving up the river. It's always sensing for that area of water pressure, that um, gateway to move further up the river. So resting occasionally all the time in between in front of rocks or in little holes it finds. And they tend to be aggressive creatures and if a fly just swings past them, they'll have a snap at it. Right, let's move down again. So we've got areas of pine forests on both sides of the river. And then some other trees as well that don't have the leaves. I'm not entirely sure what they are from over here. But the, uh, we were watching yesterday the pine forests and the, uh, the gillies have put a few little feeders out there. And we're watching the, grad, the uh, red squirrels coming and feeding moving around and the woods are beautiful really are beautiful there's obviously a shoot in there as well as plenty of pheasants knocking about and just over on the far bank on the south beat now i can see some other anglers making their way through the trees gilly behind them just showing them where to fish and as i'm moving down my bank i'm now getting to an area where there's some reinforcement work being done on the bank and it's just created a little ledge and the plan is to fish from that ledge so I'm not having to wade. It makes casting a little harder but I think it's the, the less worse of the two options. Right, let's move down. I think I'm going to get one more round of casting in before I move up onto this ledge. got a bit of a downstream wind blowing now so I'm just gonna have to 
just be aware of that with my spay cast because I don't want to fly in the back of the head. Not the speed that this is going. Right, as this is swinging, I'm going to try and get down to this ledge. But the, the boulders are just a little greasy here. Reminds me of uh, fishing on the upper deer with that green snotty weed. There we go, I'm up on the ledge now. The only problem from fishing up on a bank is that you um, the line doesn't because the line's coming through the air more before it gets to your stripping fingers it dries out and you end up with a, a sore finger from stripping that cast going out nicely now anyway I can get a good old cast right out into the middle of the river and the secret here really is just to is just to cover water. Keep covering and keep covering and keep covering water. Uh, these fish are running. Just a case of having your fly in the water as a fish comes past. Uh, really, it's luck and numbers. It looks very fishy, this. Very, very fishy. Unfortunately, like many of the Scottish rivers, you know, Atlantic salmon numbers are declining rapidly and have done on this river. Uh, the River Dee is famous as a, a river that has spring fish. It was the spring river, really. And uh, they've pretty much lost their spring run now. It's, you're getting more of a very late spring or summer run. Um, at this time of year normally this would be where everyone would be catching the spring salmon but there was uh, six fish caught on the whole of the day yesterday well, that was reported anyway uh, none on here as in in years gone by that would have been very very different but consequently that means that the fishing is a lot cheaper than it used to be now, let's see if we can get a pull today eh? You've got to be an eternal optimist when you're a salmon angler. It's often years and years of perseverance before you uh, get into your first fish. I remember my first salmon and uh, I can't remember how many years it took of fishing before I finally netted one. But it was a lot. And the gillies just coming over now, say hello. Well, the gillies just been over just to check I'm okay and uh, just tell me which other pools to fish on my way down. And he's uh, reinforced what I was just thinking was this looks like such a fishy piece of water. And uh, As we were chatting, we just saw a fish come out further up. But uh, he said it looked like a kelt. I guess a lot of people listening to this podcast are probably trout anglers. So I will do a little bit of explaining about salmon fishing just to help you. So a kelt is a fish that's spawned. So a salmon that's come up the river and spawned and uh, is still in the river. And uh, before it makes its journey hopefully back to sea again um, and uh, we really don't want to catch kelts it's, uh, it takes a bit of getting used to a bit of understanding but you know they've traveled all this way they've done the job and we want to leave them alone and uh, you know give them some time to rest and, and, and head hopefully head back down to to sea to feed up and come back in a subsequent year and be even bigger um, so when you see a catch return um, that says zero for a beat of river it doesn't mean to say there's no fish being caught you might have had five or ten kelts being caught but they generally aren't reco recorded on a salmon catch return what we're after is the holy grail of salmon fishing is a springer and um, a springer is a, a fish effectively not long not long after leaving the sea that's what we want we want a very sea 
sea fresh fish, bright silver in coloration, fat, hard fighting. Um, and they're entering the river pretty much all the time, although they will have peaks and troughs depending on where you are in the country. Um, but they're certainly in the system at the minute. And ideally what we really, really want is a, a springer with sea lice on. So when the, um, when the fish are in sea, when the fish are at sea, they have lice on them. And um, if we catch a fish with sea lice on, it shows it's just come out the sea. Those lice will fall off reasonably quickly after it's been in fresh water. But that's the holy grail of, uh, of fly fishing. So if you do catch a kelp, the way to tell, it can be fairly hard for beginners, but they, they tend to be very thin. So almost long, thin fish. Whereas a spring salmon will have a, a definite oval quality to it, a real uh, fit, fat, muscly look to it. Um, it'll look well proportioned, whereas a, a kelp can have kind of fairly large heads and tails and quite a thin body. And uh, it's good to know the difference because really if you do catch a kelp, you, you should be just unhooking it in the water as quickly as possible, not handling it and just letting it be, letting it go on its way. And it's important to just put a little bit of time in to, uh, to work out the difference between the two. Obviously, if you've got a ghillie with you, then that's what they're... Uh... Yeah, so that's the difference between your, your springers and your kelts. And then your salmon par are your baby fish. So fish that have hatched from the eggs that have spawned in the river. They will live as par for... Well, it depends, how, it depends on the quality of the river. So some amount of years anywhere between two and maybe even up to four or five years depending on the, the, the availability of food and then once your par get to a certain stage they will they will turn into smolts and the smolt is the juvenile salmon heading to sea for the first time so a few bits of terminology but um it's all part of the fun learning about the life cycle it's such a majestic fish it really is such a wonderful fish to fish for and such a wonderful environment to be in and you meet some great characters i think is it salmon angler has a distinctive there's a distinctive breed of person that's involved in salmon fishing and it's someone who has a level of patience that i think maybe doesn't exist in other forms of fishing i'll give you an example i was fishing on the tay last year and um, a chap I was fishing with had fished for 14 days straight in Scotland bar Sundays because you can't fish for salmon on a Sunday. 14 days straight and he'd not so much had a pull. And this is eight or nine hour days. And he was fishing behind me in a pool, hooked into a fish. First salmon in two weeks. And it, he had it on for about 10 minutes and I put my rod down and I couldn't get to him because he was uh, over the other side of the river, but um, put my rod down. I thought, well, I'll, I'll just enjoy watching him bring this fish in. And I saw him starting to behave a bit strangely. And what had happened was the salmon had taken him around a rock in the river. And he said he had two choices. He could let the line go slack and see the salmon would work its way out. And obviously the danger of that is you take the pressure off the fish and the hook comes out or he could try and pull and hopefully he would pull the line free and he, he went for option two and uh, the loop on his uh, tip snapped and uh, away went the fish. And after 14 days, one fish, you'd think, you know, what kind of person is going to kind of put up with that and, you know, think how much that's cost. And uh, he, he laughed about it. I watched him laughing. He, he, was, in, he was doubled up with laughter. Uh, he sat down, had a cup of tea, picked his rod up and carried on fishing. And I think, I think there's, I mean, that's obviously an incredibly patient person, person, but you have to have an element of that within you when you're salmon fishing. Otherwise you would, uh, you wouldn't do it because it's 95% uh, despair and 5% elation. But I wouldn't go as far, that's an old saying. I wouldn't go as far as say it's despair. It's 
95% enjoying your surroundings and 5% fishing. Right, I'm just about unsnagged there and I'm going to just move a bit further down this wall here. Fish a bit of a lower section of the pool. This looks a bit easier casting here. Right, that's a nice long cast. I'm getting getting right out into the uh, into the fast water. Flies swinging around to the bank, and then I'm just putting a few few strips in, a bit of movement, just in case a fish has followed it round. Uh, a little bit of movement just to induce the take. Am I uh, getting the little burns on my fingers now from this line being too dry? And so over the far side now I can see bunches of daffodils that are interspersed with the vegetation. Beautiful pine forest all around. The sun's just glinting off parts of the river further down. I can just see anglers in the distance fishing and there's no place you'd rather be. Peace and quiet. Birds of prey occasionally swooping around and just you and your thoughts. Secret to spade casting is a slow, smooth action. And it always takes me a while to just half a day just to settle into it. I only go salmon fishing probably three or four times a year and um, whereas I'm trout fishing and casting every week and there's a tendency when you first pick up a when I first pick up a spay rod at least for that first session just to be a little bit too aggressive and uh, try and punch it out and you really don't need much effort at all to, to fire out these modern lines, especially this line. It's a, I don't often talk about brands, but um, I've fished with, I've got lots of different fly lines for a, a friend of mine recommended to uh, change to a Rio Scandi. And I, uh, I have to say it's a phenomenal line. It's the, the kit that comes with the multiple tips. So you can select whether you want a floating intermediate slow sink or fast sinking tip and it's all paired to the line the head's quite short and it casts like an absolute dream i was casting yesterday and casting out a a sinking tip with a a one inch copper tube on the end and it was just flying out across the river and it was just an absolute joy and um it was enjoyable just casting yesterday on this new line. The other lines I've had have been great, but it's it's a huge difference, this line. It really is. So I can't recommend it highly enough. I'm just rocking the rod back and forth here as well, making a bit of movement in the fly. It's always good to have movement in a salmon fly, I think, especially in the slower pools. We just we're about halfway down this pool now, so it's just lost its ferocity. There's still a good bit of movement in the water. But it's just lost its ferocity and just starting to not swing as quickly, so I'm just compensating for that by putting a little bit of movement in the fly myself. Today's the day. It does feel fishy today. Feels fishy. Bit of wind coming in now. There we go. 
Let's snap this back out again. Right, keep moving down. So I'm just approaching where I parked the car now on the grass. And there's an old fishing hut, green fishing hut to my left. And the sun's really glinting off the water now, but there's another bank of cloud about to come in and cover it. Come on, fishy fishies. I should have put a disclaimer at the top of the podcast, really, that the chances of catching a fish in this podcast are a lot lower than usual. But I think it's nice to be, it's nice for me to record something a little different and especially give any trout fly fly anglers out there a bit of a fl- bit of a flavour of, uh, of what this is all about. And the river's starting to narrow a touch now, and the flow rate is decreased somewhat I'm going to keep pushing down I think as far as this old green hut on the left hand side and then that's probably the best of it right let's move down a bit further just walking down these giant slabs of reinforcement that have been put in the bank and they make a handy little walkway the wading here is really treacherous it's quite deep close in as well so not really suitable for wading right i can go back to a spay cast now i've got a bit of room behind me a nice long line out right over into the main flow let it swing round Uh, I think the plan is tonight to, uh, I might fish on a bit later into the evening as well. Yesterday I finished at five and I was knackered and it it felt a bit cold and no one had seen a fish all day and I was ready for a beer and put my feet up to be honest. So I I left at five when the gillies did. But I think tonight, I think I will, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot fishing, um, fishing on into the evening a touch as well really make it a long day of it and then I've got my last day on here tomorrow and head back to uh, head back to home after that and then I'm pretty much just got to prepare my little beat of a river and do a bit of uh, do a bit of work on the bank over the weekend then I'm um, my instruction and coaching starts on Monday and I'm back out on the river with clients myself cloud covers come over now and there's a nice dull a dull feeling about the day it's quite mild it's perfect fishing conditions all we need now is some fish and you just got to remind yourself that at some point today when I'm studying this river there will be a salmon swim past me and all I have to do is have my fly in the right place at the right time Right, moving down now. The pool's really deepening up. The water's slowed a bit. There's still enough enough movement in there to bring the fly around. There's a bit of a, a downstream wind, but nothing that's causing any problems as yet. But I think it's due to pick up a touch later. can see the odd just near the bank little boil which will be a submerged rock so that's always a good place to cover just in front of them or sometimes behind as a fish just rests up for a short rest as it's running upstream
Ooh, clever. I was just uh, took my eye off my, just took my concentration off the uh, what I was doing for a second, and as I was moving the rod backwards and forwards, just rammed the tip of my rod into the rocks, which wasn't too clever, really. I was actually watching some crows uh, flying about, wondering what they were doing, and I just realised there's a bird of prey uh, having a go at them. Could be a kite. I think by the looks of it. Man, I'm not too up on my birds, but it looks like a kite. The uh, crows always seem to get very wound up when there's a, a bird of prey nearby. And I often see them trying to mob them, and attack them in the sky. Right, what are we going to do here? Another spade cast, I think. And, uh, move down a touch over the boulders. I've got my wading stick with me, so... And I've got my waders on, obviously, so I can get in and out the river. And I think the next pull down, I'm going to be fishing from the bank as well. And then I will be in the river for the the pool beneath that. But what the gill has done is ask me if I'm happy to fish down these little harder sections to cast in because the um, he's got a group of Americans come out and they're, they're beginning. So I think he's going to give them the easy wading bit which is great and um, do a bit of cast intuition with them and just give them that whole Scottish salmon fishing experience that they're after and um, I'm more than happy to be uh, to, my, to be left up here and work my way down on my own actually he keeps popping up the ghillie and checking him okay and um, absolutely fine this is perfect for me about 30 or 40 feet below me you can see an old groin that comes out into the river and it, my fly's just now swinging round in front of that and I think once I get to the point where my fly's just off it then uh, it'll be time to finish fishing this pool and move down further. Looking further up the river I can see a four wheel drive just pulled up further up with a couple more anglers getting out. Plenty of rods out on the river today but very good conditions today. Oh. It's definitely a day to be out fishing. Right, I'm just going to check my fly because it did just whip up against the bank. I just want to check there's no grass on it or check it all looks in order. And the monkey copper tube is what is the fly I'm using. And for anyone who's not familiar with salmon flies, it's... A black and yellow fly, about oh, so about three or four inches long, and it's tied on a tube, and the the line is inserted through the tube. A hook's then tied onto the line, and then the hook is pulled up inside the tube. And uh, it's a copper tube, so it will sink a bit as well and get down. Just cut through the flow. Well, the fly looks just fine. Uh, let's get this line out again and keep on fishing. There's a whole host of different salmon flies tubes singles doubles trebles from great big salmon flies we, we sell some that are probably eight inches including the tail right down to tiny size 14 and 16 flies for for summertime uh, spring fishing on the whole this time of year Generally, people use tube flies, fairly bright, or at least bits of bright colour in them, black and yellow, black and green, um, flash materials. These spring salmon, as they're running up the river, they're not particularly shy. And if you get your fly in front of one, something big that stands out, they're fairly aggressive and they're going to have a snap at it. Once we get resident fish in the river, um, once you get through to those low brighter days of summer then things change and your uh, your tube flies become less less successful and you really want to scale things down to smaller often more drab patterns as well just try and deceive well to try and tempt those shyer resident fish Oh, I've snagged up, so that's a good cue, I think, to finish fishing this pool. 
as I've uh, snagged on a rock. So I'm going to wander down the river and unsnag myself and then uh, jump in the car, head down to the next pool. Right, just walking back up to the car now, up the grass. This is where it's invaluable to have a yeah, a rod carrier on the car. I love the VAC racks. Um, it's the most popular one we sell, but you can quickly clip your rod to the roof of your car and then move beats. Because there's very few cars you can fit a 14-foot salmon rod in, and the last thing you want is to be taking things down or poking them out of windows. Right, back at the car, let's clip this rod up. Rest it on the foam, put the elastic over, clip on, and then we're good to go. One, and then one further up on the roof. Test it, job's a good one. Right, so I've just moved down to the next pool in the car, parked up. Just going to unclip the rod off the roof and then what we've got here is a big area of stone bank reinforcement. Um, probably a good 15 foot high and they've built some galvanised uh, aluminium steps down into the river for the anglers to get down. The river's a lot narrower here than the top pool and slower. It's probably only... I don't know, 60 feet across, something like that. I'm never good at gauging widths as soon as they get above 20 feet, but it looks about 60 foot. Um, so this water, I imagine, will be reasonably deep here. Um, so I'm just heading up the, uh, the track. I've got the pine trees on my right and some lovely rolling countryside beyond and then some of the higher mountain tops further in the distance. You can see the odd bit of snow still capping the very tops of the, the summits of the hills. Just keeping my eye out for red squirrels. It was lovely to see some red squirrels yesterday. And the ghillie was telling me that they have, they're they growing in population here as well. They're really starting to flourish, but only because they're really, really hardly culling the greys. And, uh, unless you really really come down hard on the greys you just never get any any reds back but he was telling me the amount of greys that they've uh, had to uh, to dispatch to finally get these reds flourishing again right I'm just coming up to these aluminium steps so I'm going to have to be nice and steady getting down and again I'm not going to weigh this I'm going to fish it from the uh, from the stones because the wading is a little bit tricky and it's fairly deep close in as well but there's a nice even flow here um, and I can get a reasonable line out and cover this water without a problem right onto the steps and down we go taking care A not to fall and B not to rip my waders on the stones and I'll just move out to one that's a little further out into the river. This will do. And let's get some line off and start fishing. Again, start with a short line. Just fish that water in front of you. Just in case there's a fish lying close to the bank. I remember fishing on the, the Tay two or three years ago and there was a groin that sticks out into the river and a nice bit of current just flowing past it and all, all I did was uh, dangled my leader with no fly alone off the groin and a salmon tuck. Uh, so they can be, they can be closer than you think some of these fish. So I start with the short line, keep lengthening the line and lengthening it through the cast until I've worked out my full, full length of line I'm going to be casting. And then I'll think about starting to move. And that way I'm just systematically covering the water. 
there is lots of this uh, yellow flowering gorse around and as the sun just cuts through the clouds in certain places it just lights it up little beacons of yellow just dotted around the surrounding countryside and undulating fields pine trees little farm buildings lots of land rovers and four by fours moving anglers around the river it's a certain atmosphere you get in scotland that you don't get in a as such in other areas and you can just soak up that whole that whole scenic experience i think the other thing is after eight or nine or ten hours solid fishing on the river you will not find a beer that tastes better than one after a hard day's fishing well i guess you will though that would be a beer after You've just caught a salmon after a hard day's fishing, but when you finally get back in a hot shower in your B&B or hotel and head out to the local pub and meet all the other anglers have also blanked, drown your sorrows with a pint or two and then breakfast the next morning and a, a cup of coffee and you're full of enthusiasm again and today's the day, that's the motto. Right, so we've got an even flow here, pretty much over the whole river. There's a little bit of a, a faster flow over my side of the river I'm fishing here, but the current is relatively even and uh, a little slower. So I'm going to put plenty of movement in the fly. Let's work some more line out now. I'm not far off my maximum length for casting. The only sounds I can hear is the sounds of the river the pool I've just fished, that white water at the top of the beat, the sounds of birdsong in the trees and the odd little gurgle of river against these rocks. I can't even hear an aeroplane. Completely quiet. No cars. No nothing. Right, head on down the rocks. Take four or five paces. Oh, there's a salmon just come out next to me. I'm going to go upstream and try and just swing one over that. But the problem is, if it's a running fish, I ain't going to be able to get anywhere near it if it's moving up river. Bit of rock climbing, so salmon's just come out just above me. So I've uh, just quickly moved upstream and I'll just see if I can cover the fish. It wasn't far off the bank actually. They're always upstream of you when they show. <laughs> just about covering it where it was anyway but if it's a running fish it could be could be 50 100 meters upstream by now well a bit of excitement anyway i have a couple more casts and then i'll uh, i'll head back down to where i uh, where I left off and keep working down the pool. Strip this one. Right, wind in and I will head back to where I, where I left off. It's always worth covering a fish I've seen. Uh, there's not a huge amount of fish in the D system. So if you can cover a fish, it's always worthwhile trying to show your fly to it. Right, got to do a bit of rock climbing just to get back down the stones now and I just heard another splosh upstream. It could well be the uh, the same fish showing again further up. Right, bit of rock climbing around on the rocks. Try not to A, break rod, B, fall in, or C, rip waders. Be beautiful fly water as well. And by that I mean the pools have got 
good bits of moving water in to, to move your fly. Um, some of the other rivers, especially the the Tay, a huge river, massive pools, but some of them are very still and or the, the water's moving almost in a kind of washing machine action in it. It messes your fly line up. Whereas certainly this bit of the D has got it's perfect fly water really. I mean, the Tays has got some great fly fly fishing water on it as well, um, and I, I fish it regularly, but it also lends itself to spinning, especially some of them big pools early in the season when there's lots of water in. I guess it lends itself to spinning really a little more than, than a fly. Right, move down a touch. I'll just drop this fly line out first and then move down. Well, I'm about finished this little run now. I can see further down the river there's another angler in the pool. Further down is just getting out, so it's probably about time if I headed down there and work my fly down that pool there's the odd pheasant flying across the river from bank to bank lovely overcast day now i think i've just about done the best of it now it's just about slowing down and just about finished the fishing in this pool Well, that's it for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. As ever, for more information on our fly fishing coaching, visit us at www.peaksflyfishing.com or for our premium flies, including all the salmon flies, trout flies, please visit us at shop.peaksflyfishing.com. Until next time, thanks for listening. Bye-bye.